Hi, hey everybody. Welcome to our Tuesday night toolbox training. We have a special guest speaker, uh, star director Jackie Duran, one of my favorite people on the planet. And she is the perfect person to come on and talk tonight about social media, social selling. Um, Jackie, when I was coming up, um, was one of the people and continues to be one of the people that I look to for inspiration on um, how she sells on social media, how she talks, things she posts, her content. She's very creative. What she does is quality. And it's just, it's inspirational. I couldn't think of anybody better than Miss Jackie Duran to come on and talk to us tonight. And I'm so blessed to have you here with Squad Goals, as well as the um, Let's Freaking Post group that we have going on for the month of May. And if you guys have have any questions we're going to save them to the end so go ahead and put them in the chat and then when Jackie is done she will scroll back and she will address them as they come up so well, I'm going to turn over the floor to you Jackie so if you get straight down to business and I'm going to spotlight you if anybody has any questions again put them in the um, comments and I'm so blessed to have you let's go girlfriend Well, thank you so much for asking me to come on. I, it is totally an honor. I love Re. I have also, I've followed her. She has been an inspiration to me. Um, and so it's, it's really great that since he gives us this community to be able to connect with people that we probably never would have ever have met, right? So as much as, you know, we love the money, we love what we do it is truly i think the connection piece and building those relationships with people who are going through the same things we all are is literally priceless to me it has given me so much so i have to say that and i have to say thank you to re for everything she does and everything she puts out into the sensi world and community so all right i'm gonna stop gushing now okay so social selling okay i'm not gonna go and do the whole thing of this is how i joined and this is all the things i've been a consultant for 10 years i did not take the fast track to success jackie did not read that book i must have missed it because i originally joined just because um honestly i i had never really heard of sensi i joined in january of 20 12. I'd never heard of Sensi. Um, always been a candle lover. Uh, and somebody asked me to host a party and I was like, okay, it's like something about candles. So I'm in. So uh, I hosted a party. I invited my friends from work and oh my goodness, people showed up and I was like, well, cool. And so I decided to go ahead and join. Thought it would be something fun for me to do. Never thought it'd be a business. Never thought that I would be a star director today and soon to be superstar director because I'm all about putting stuff out in the universe. So um, never give up and never think that just because you've started your journey going one way that it won't completely surprise you and have your pathway open up to a bunch of different directions. So always remember you are worthy. I'm all about the affirmations right now. I'm just in that headspace. So um i knew being a mom and just figuring out okay i'm gonna work this as a business making a mindset change i knew i did not have here's here's the truth i did not have customers who were interested in home parties because they were working moms just like me they just didn't have time i really didn't have the time to do home parties because i was working and my husband was working and um, our youngest, who is now 12 and has grown up with since he was two. And we, I mean, daycare is expensive, straight up, it's just expensive. And so he would work the night shift, I would work the day shift. I worked at a hospital um, for like the first eight years of my career. And so in the hospital, I would then shift a night shift and he would shift a day shift. It was insane, the things that we did. <sighs> that we do as adults right and so having that outlet with sensi it really was amazing to me that i would be able to do something like this because everybody else was working just like i was and i was like okay if i can't do home parties because i don't have the time not able to do it and my friends aren't either what do i do and which maybe most of us do now but i started looking on youtube 
And I was like, there's got to be a way. There was only a couple people around that time. Christina Stainbrook was one of them um, that I just, I would get on and I would watch Kimberly Polito. I just, I remember watching some people who were just kind of getting their feet wet in Cincy and going, all right, this is something I can get on board with because they started talking about how they were working their business. And I was like, okay, I, I think I can get on board with this. I can make a plan every month and okay, I can have some conversations every month. I started really getting involved. And when my close network market dried up, which do you guys know it does pretty quickly if you even have one when you start out which mine was very small um it dried up and so i started figuring out okay i've got to search other places i would get on pinterest and i really used pinterest for a long time and i spent a lot of time um back in my early days of sensi of trying to make my boards all pretty and doing all the things and i will say that i did get some sales through that and of course i still i mean i love pinterest still to this day but i wasn't finding exactly what i needed out of it but i was like all right if i could kind of get if i'm getting a response here where else can i get a response and so i started getting on instagram and that was back before we had reels, even on Instagram, right? It was literally just pictures, but I was like, okay, I'm in. People like to see the products. They like to see the warmers. So I started posting. And as I started posting, I started gaining some followers just because um, I was just posting basically pictures of warmers just that I had that I would get in, even if it wasn't my order, if it was my customer's order, I would get it and I would do the standard inspection. Okay, let me make sure there's no bulb broken, make sure there's no scratches on it. All right, great. Now I can pack it up. And before I would pack it up, I would always just take a picture so that way I'd have a real life picture that didn't come out of the catalog because years ago, it was really hard to find in real life pictures unless you knew somebody who had it or people were just starting to share their own pictures. And so I would do that. I would just take a picture and then I was like, okay, they want to kind of know how my customers want to know why do they want Scentsy in their house, right? Why do they, why do they want this? And so I would start to post talking about how after a long day at work, I wanted to come home and relax. And so I'd throw in, and change my wax to you know whatever it was at the time some nice amazing relaxing scent mediterranean spa or something like that um and so i would throw something like that in and then i really started noticing that as i shared more about what i loved about sensei not just the pictures but actually kind of almost bringing them behind the scenes. Like, this is why I chose this scent today. Um, this is why I put Sunkiss Citrus in today because I got a raise, a raise at my job and I'm so excited. So I'm making a big dinner and I want the house to smell great. And I started again noticing that when I was opening up, when I was being more real and just sharing, that people were getting more and more excited. They were really getting interested to hear how I was using Sensi in those ways. And so early on, that's how I was able to build, start building what I now know is my customer base. But what I didn't know then was my, it was coming from social media. So I tried to continue to duplicate that. I also started growing my team because I did show up. This one thing in my Sensi business is I have always been consistent. Always, 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 always. Ever since I changed back in like 2013 and said, okay, I'm gonna work this as a business, not as a hobby. When I started doing that, I even set it up to where every Monday I would do, um, that's back when they had Google Hangout and it would automatically connect to YouTube. So I didn't have to edit, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even have to upload it, it was wonderful. <laughs> and so I would do that, but I made the commitment to say, every Monday I'm gonna jump in here and I'm gonna just share what it is I'm working on in my business because I needed accountability. And I didn't really find anybody or have anybody close to me that I felt that I could really have as an accountability partner. So I was like, all right, self, I'm going to have to be my own accountability partner. So I'm going to post it because then I'm going to hold myself to it. I always say, if you ever make a commitment to yourself, keep the commitment to yourself because you're the one who's most important at the end of the day. It's not what 
everybody else is doing. It's not what our, our sponsors are doing or our uplines or our, our downlines or whatever, right? We are literally here for us. And so we have to be able to hold ourselves accountable too, right? There's that accountability factor that has to go in. I can't show up and just be like, oh, I put this flyer out there last week and nobody commented on it. So hmm, I don't think anybody's interested in the sensey thing. No, we can't post and pray. We can't just throw out some random flyer or picture that we found. We have to start pouring ourselves into it. and. Like I said, I, I ended up learning that out of complete accident, only by trial and error. And I think that that is one of the greatest things in this business, because one of the things that I love to talk to people when they're just joining is I will tell them, you know, this is what works for me. I always like to share what works for me, but I remind them that my business looks completely different from theirs. My business looks completely different from Ree's business, right? My business looks completely different from Irene's business. Hers looks completely different from Miguel's business, right? Everybody has a way that's fine, that's working for them that they have found. And I guarantee you, probably nine times out of 10, it probably wasn't the first thing that they tried. So if something doesn't work, pivot pivot what you're doing, being able to stand back and look. So in those days, I was looking back at my social media, specifically my Instagram, because that's where I was getting more and more followers. And I would see what posts get the most likes, what posts are the ones that people actually comment on, even though I try to always ask or do that call to action, right? At the end of whatever you're talking about, give them a call to action, you know, drop a heart below if you're going to SFR, right? So getting that interaction who's doing that so it's really finding your audience and being able to figure out who your audience is is half the battle because once you know who your audience is maybe it's moms like you who are working dads everybody all of us out there no matter what we've got obligations and responsibilities outside of sensi i mean i do sensi full-time right but i still got the household to take care of kids i got my first grandbaby on the way right we all have lives and so we have to figure out how our sensei fits into that so kick those excuses to the curb if you're trying if you find yourself stuck in that i don't have time to learn this um i wish i could learn how to do instagram reels but i just don't have the time or i don't know what i'm doing none of us did let me give you the the spoiler alert none of us knew how to do a reel perfectly when they came out with reels on instagram most of us who really wanted to learn how to do it, we started watching other people. We, I guarantee just like me, went on YouTube. How, you know, what are the trending reels? How do you do a transition? Danielle had her first reel today. Amazing, right? So being able to not only believe in yourself, know that you're worthy, know that you can make this work, but sharing all of that that makes you you, that's your authenticity, right? And that, my friends, is your calling card. That is your secret sauce to this business because nobody else can be you. You are the only you. Even though we all sell Scentsy, we all sell it, right, a little bit differently. Maybe you use social media. Maybe you do more home parties. Maybe you do events, right? There's all kinds of ways that we do this. But when, specifically with social selling, on whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Twitter or Pinterest or TikTok or Snapchat, right? So many options to choose from now to connect with people. I have one of my very good friends. Thank you so much, Mitch Farron. Thank you. Um, I have very good friend, one of my very good friends, her name is Cassie Baker, and she does phenomenal on Facebook. Like, what I, I always tell her like one day I want to grow up and be like you right because she can post something on Facebook and within like 10 minutes she'll be like oh I just got a $200 order oh I just got another $50 order oh I just got this and I'll be sitting there like okay wait a minute what are you doing <laughs> like, how is this happening for you and she'll be like oh well for instance with when we had our last flash sale I know I know it's a little crazy right crazy things happen but she had a flash sale and she did really great. And the reason why she did really great is because her audience is on Facebook. So she went on Facebook and she shared what the specials were. 
and people responded in mass. She had such a great response just from posting on Facebook. And so I wanted to put it to the test. And so I told her, I said, well, I want you to jump on over to Instagram and put something like that on Instagram. She was like, all right. She doesn't use Instagram very much. She said the same thing on Instagram. I think she maybe got a couple likes, but no orders, no contacts. Nobody reached out saying, I want to join your team or I'm interested in this sensey thing, nothing. So I was like, okay, this is the thing. Facebook works for you. That's your niche. That's where your customers are. That's your customer base. Lean into that. Cause she's always like, my Instagram isn't as good as yours, Jackie. That's okay. It doesn't have to be because if, if Facebook is what is working for her, then Facebook is what she needs to concentrate on. So the same way it is for me, for whatever reason, Instagram has just been not only where I like to, to be most of the time on social media, but it's just been where I have found more customers. I can post the same thing on Facebook and get no results. But I post it on Instagram and I can get like three DMs from people saying, oh, I've heard about Sensi or, oh, I knew somebody who used to sell, but I don't have a consultant anymore. Would you send me a catalog? Awesome, right? So find out what people are liking on your social media, right? Figure that out first. Then you need to figure out where the audience lives. And maybe for some of you, you might find that you get maybe, you know, half and half Instagram and Facebook or TikTok and Instagram or whatever it is, right? If there's a combo, then by all means, split your time and find that sweet spot. I like to call it the Goldilocks spot, right? Because it's, it's not too cold. It's not too warm. It's right there in the middle where you can either share more about who you are as a person, because remember, nobody wants to be sold to 24 seven. Nobody. I will tell you what, the first time that somebody will friend me and I'll friend them back, who's not a Sensi consultant, right? And for whatever reason, all of a sudden I start getting a whole bunch of, hey, I'm, I'm hosting a party or, hey, look, I just got invited to three different Tupperware parties and I don't even know who hosts Tupperware. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> Who are these people? I don't know these people. I'm not going to show up for those people. The same thing is going to happen to you, right? So we need to be sharing our experiences, not just selling at all times. Building those relationships is the key in all of that, right? And being authentic, of course, always at the end of the day, be authentic because you can own your own crazy. I know we've all seen and heard all the quotes, right? But at the end of the day, like I said, you are your own personal special sauce to this business. Put your spin on it. If you're silly and goofy, be silly and goofy. If you're the hot mess mom, be the hot mess mom. You think I took long doing this hairdo today? No, I did not. <laughs> but I was busy today. And you know what? I killed my business today. I did a lot of things. I got a lot of things accomplished. I'm like, yay. Jackie, kudos on a good day, right? Celebrate those small wins. And when you're on social media, one of the really great things is to be able to, to network back. So while we are building those relationships, remember when people comment and they start commenting, you need to be responding back, okay? Don't ghost them back because that's gonna break the connection, right? You wanna to continue to build those bonds. So it's kind of like a layer cake, right? So you're going to put the post, you're gonna find that, that audience, then you're gonna figure out where they live, and then you're gonna start actually answering back, even if it's just a thank you. You know, Maybe you posted a picture of the warmer, um, or you, won, you earned annual sales, and you posted that, and somebody says, congratulations, simply responding back with a thank you so much. I pre and maybe if they helped you, I appreciate you helping and working on my, or working with my business as well. Thank you, right? Just responding with a thank you is going to help. So you have to continue to build those relationships. You cannot stop at the sale. I will tell you right now that, I don't know the exact number because I'm not that kind of a person anymore, but I used to be really good at math, <laughs> but I would say maybe 
70% of my customer base is repeat customers. How do you get repeat customers? You give them an experience. Just like Maya Angelou said, and I love the Maya Angelou quote that people will not only always, only remember what you did, it was how you made them feel. How you made them feel. I had a team member who had lost, um, lost an uncle that she was very close with. She hadn't posted it in my team page or anything like that. I do follow my team members. So I, I happened to catch her post on Facebook and of course did, you know, so sorry for your loss and, you know, kept her in my prayers that, that day and a couple of days after. And when I have team members who I see that they're either going through a loss or a major milestone, like maybe they just had a child or maybe they're getting married or, you know, one of those bigger milestones, right? I actually will write it down and then I use Trello and that's what I use to keep business with, right? That's my to-do list. And so I take my post-it notes. This is my one, here's my golden nugget for you all today. Here's my golden nugget for you. Here's my secret is because I'm one of those people who I get, whether I'm looking at Instagram or whatever, and I'll get inspired. I'm like, oh, I want to remember to do that later. I want to remember to go back to this. I write everything down on a post-it note. And before I leave my, my office is my work area. But if you don't have an office, remember, you don't have to, right? Your work area can be your laptop on the side of the couch. It was for me for a long time. but before I close the business for the day, walk out of my office and be done, because we got to shut ourselves off, I make sure that anything that I wrote down on my post-it notes gets put into my to-do list for tomorrow. Because otherwise, I fell victim to the post-it note stacking game. If anybody else has played that game, it is not enjoyable, it is not fun, and it is really not very productive. But... <laughs> So I will write down if I notice a big thing happen. And then usually I keep cards on hand. Some of them are more generic than others. Um, so I found a, a card and it just said, uh, it was like a picture of like a little stick figure on the front. It said, sending you a hug. And on the inside, it was, you know, sending, you know, sending love, whatever it was. And I just took a few minutes, wrote down, you know, so sorry for your loss thinking of you, um, put it in the mail, sent it out. Today, she got the card and she was like, I opened it up and I looked at it and she goes, I was just so shocked that you reached out and you, you were caring enough to send this card. Now, that's not even my frontline downline. It's like a third or fourth generation down, right? But how are you making people feel? What experience are you leaving them with? The same thing I, I do with my team members, I do with my customers because I follow them on Facebook or Instagram. And again, I watch for those big milestones. I have their address because they've ordered form from me recently. And sometimes it may not even be sending a card in the mail. It might just be, hey, I noticed that um, little Sophie graduated from kindergarten. Those pictures were adorable, right? Sending just a quick, quick message. Nothing about Sensi building relationships because when they leave you with that experience and have that experience with you, trust me, they're going to come right on back to you when they're ready. They will be your forever customers. So don't let the relationship stop at the sale, even if it's on social media, which I know is, is very easy to do, right? looking through the feeds on facebook or on instagram or on twitter pinterest anywhere right there's just so much that we're taking in all day long but if we're able to continue to build those bonds then our customers are going to learn to know that we are always going to be here not only are we here to work our business but we're also here as human beings and that we really do care about them that experience and relationship is just going to take you so much farther in your business. When you hear the term, the fortune is in the follow-up, think of it that way, right? It's the experience, okay? The experience and the way that you make them feel. You can also, I've also found very good success in my 10 years of sponsoring simply because I don't 
just post, you know, all the newest warmer, or I'm going to go on YouTube and do an unboxing, or I'm going to, you know, share what I'm doing this week with my happy mail or whatever. Another thing that I have found has also been specifically on Instagram and on Facebook with stories. Stories are a very popular feature on both platforms. So if you're team Facebook, team Instagram, whatever you are, right, just apply to both. Um, but I will tell you that Instagram and Facebook both are pushing story content out. So when you are being consistent in posting to your stories, if you are being consistent responding back to people who are responding to your posts or your videos or what have you, right? All of that is pushing you into more algorithms. It's pushing you out there. And so when you are getting out there, remember, you're not just always going to be talking to customers. You may be talking to customers, but you also might be talking to people who are thinking about the Sensi opportunity, because what are people Googling? What's it like to be a Sensi consultant? I don't even know how many people have joined my team over the years just because they were like, I watch your videos on YouTube. Okay, yeah, I know I do some unboxing videos on YouTube, but the majority of my YouTube is training stuff. And I'm like, well, if they're watching my training, then hopefully, yeah, great, they're joining, wonderful, right? So you don't necessarily have to go out there and do a bunch of training videos, but in your stories, in your Instagram post or just a Facebook post, right? Even a picture of your workspace for the day. Even if you go up to Starbucks and get a coffee and you got your laptop out, your iPad, your phone, whatever. Take that story, do that story. It doesn't take long to do a 15 second and be like, this is my day. This is how I spend Mondays now with a big cup of coffee and your slippers on, right? These are the things that people are watching for because on social media, that's what they're doing, right? That's what we all do. We're people watching. We're just people watching. And you're either going to get inspired by somebody or you're going to find somebody that you feel like you connect with. You're like, oh my gosh, that's my people right there, right? You're either going to find those connections. You're going to find inspiration. You're going to find some people who you follow just because they motivate you. Maybe they're the ones always doing the motivational quotes, or they always have just something amazing that they're posting about that you're like, oh man, how do they do that? They come up with such great stuff all the time. We're following people because of the value they give. So remember, your secret sauce is you. Your secret sauce is finding your customers, finding out where they live, following up with them, building those relationships, answering back, right? recognizing the big moments, even if it's in a message. And then it's also sharing how you're working your business because what you're showing them is yes, I can work when my daughter was back doing her doctor or dentist appointment. I was out there in the lobby using their Wi-Fi. thank you very much, on my iPad going in and putting in all of my email that I wanted to send out and then updating like my Trello board or whatever it was I was doing on my tablet while she was back there with the dentist. And so I made a quick little story and I was like, this is how I'm working my Wednesday. People out there are watching. There are people watching and they're being influenced. So give them value, show them, show them how you work your business, show them that it doesn't take you being on social media 24 seven. So don't always be on. So when I say don't always be on, right? Don't, don't always have the, the volume up on your business, right? Remember, you want them to realize and get that you're a person too. You have things that are important outside of Sensi. Maybe it's church, family, grandchildren. You're a movie buff. You love going to amusement parks. Whatever it is, you have to share that side as well. Because when they start putting all those pieces of you together and seeing that you're consistently doing it, those are either your future team members, your future best customers, or just your biggest fans. And we can all use fans on social media because in the world that we live in, goodness knows there's enough trolls out there that we don't need that. So bring the positivity in. And so whenever I talk about social media, I like to, to remind everybody too that if somebody's being too loud for you on social media, whatever that means, right? 
maybe they have different views from you and, and they're being very loud about them. Maybe you just don't like the content they're posting. Maybe you think they're whatever, right? If it's not bringing you joy, if it's not bringing you value, if it's making you feel less than, then it is okay to unfriend someone. It is okay to mute them on Facebook or, and you know, there's so many different ways. The people that you surround yourself, even when it's online, what do they say about the, the five people closest to you, right? You become those people. So really determine what are you looking at on social media too? And what are you portraying on social media? Are you putting back out that positivity? So all of those pieces are going to create this perfect bubble for you to be able to work your business, work it well, and continue to grow, all while just sharing things that smell good. That's our, that's our job at the end of the day, selling things that smell good. That's it. It sounds really cool at the end of the day. And when we get to tell them that we get to do cool things like SFR and we have incentives we can work for and awards we can earn, right? All the other things, they're just like, oh my gosh, it's like the dream job. Yeah, we're living our best lives over here. So share those moments, share those moments. Um, Monique, you're not good with wording. It's okay, you don't have to be great at wording. I mean, I would say it's always good to, you know, try, I always say I try and beat myself every other day, right? But if you're not good at wording, I, when I am at a loss for words, here's honestly what I do. I will pull up Pinterest and maybe I'm, I'm looking at, maybe I'm looking at a, the red Chase Rainbows bar and I'm like, I want to take a picture of this, but I want the caption to be something maybe inspirational, or maybe I'm just figuring out what do I say about red? I don't know anything. I don't know. I will go to Pinterest and I will put in red quote or <laughs> rainbow quote or whatever it is, right? And then I will look for the quotes. And nine times out of 10, I can usually find something that either is a little bit funny, a little bit sarcastic, but not too crazy, right? A little bit sarcastic, a little bit of funny, a little bit of, a, a little bit of twisted humor, maybe a little turn of phrase, maybe just straight up motivation, but something's gonna speak to me. And so by all means, if you need to find a quote, look for a quote. Or maybe you can find another thing that I like to do too when I'm trying to think of wording or things to say or even just something to post is, again, I'll look and see what are people doing? What's catching my eye when I scroll Instagram? Because if something is going to make me stop my scroll, then I want to know what made them, what made me stop my scroll, right? Were they doing a really cool transition? Was it the, the music they were using or whatever it was, right? How can I then make that about Scentsy? Some of my best reels and most, most like when I pull up the insights and the data, right? Some of the best performing ones <laughs> have been ones where I've just been like, oh, I'm just gonna add some really nice music and I'm gonna set the tone, I'm gonna change my wax. People love it, they love watching those things. It made them stop their scroll. So it doesn't always have to be in the wording. So you can always find a little bit of creativity that way. Um, Hashtags for posts. Okay, so there's a lot of different strategies when it comes to hashtags. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of different apps about hashtags too. You can pay for them. There are, and most of them that I found that are actually even good are the ones that you do have to pay for. So I would honestly say at the end of the day, if, if it's not in your business budget, don't pay for one of those. Um, you could Google, I think, um, I want to say that you can like Google every day, like trending hashtags. But here's the thing with hashtags. You don't want to do like the most popular hashtag because what's going to happen if you put one P in the middle of a whole big bowl of soup? It's going to look like the whole big bowl of soup, right? You are not going to stand out out of all of that. So I like to kind of stick around hashtags that maybe are a little bit more unique, maybe aren't as popular. So for instance, when you're on Instagram, when you, if you've ever noticed, if you start typing in a hashtag, you just type the hashtag and maybe you start typing red. I could start typing R-E-D and then it'll like pull up like a little drop down, right? Of other 
hashtags that people have used and it will say okay there's been you know 1.2 million of this hashtag this one only has 70,000 i'm probably going to pick the one that's 70,000 and hope that it's kind of relevant to what i'm doing right but at the end of the day you just want your hashtags to be more relevant another tip that i have found that has helped me find more local customers I've been doing this now for like the last nine months ish, and I have increased my local customers just by using the hashtag of the city I live in. Sounds crazy. It sounds silly. And it's like, well, why does that work? Okay, well, here's the thing. I live in Lee Summit, Missouri, right outside of Kansas City. So I will hashtag Lee Summit, hashtag Lee Summit Mo, because that's what we go by. It's Mo instead of Missouri um hashtag downtown lee summit so we have a, a cute little downtown area with small businesses things like that i'll hashtag my area code 816. what that is doing is while it might be a broader hashtag anybody out there who's local to me and they're either looking for that hashtag or they're looking for things in the area your post is going to come up I will tell you, I have been able to increase my local customers just by adding those hashtags. So finding hashtags that are maybe a little bit more relevant to you, and then also, of course, relevant to whatever it is that you're showing, right? So it, if it happens to be um, like the aloe vera warmer, right? You could do plant mom or, you know, green thumb, or or maybe in my case, I'm the plant hospice worker. So I, I mean, even just having a fun little hashtag could sometimes also stop the scroll. So again, if it's something that you can do that. If your page is private, Jamie, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that is something I always usually forget to mention. So the thing is, is if your page is set to private on Instagram specifically, um, and also on any post on Facebook that is not public, if you use a hashtag, it's only going to go to the people who follow you already if it re really even works that way, because it has to be public it has to be a public view for the hashtags to even show up because people do search for hashtags or certain hashtags i follow i follow the hashtag uh sensi snapshot i follow the hashtag sensi life because i love to get inspiration from fellow consultants right so i want to see what everybody else is doing oh how can i take that picture in my house i have that warmer oh i'm gonna dress mine up right so follow those hashtags that um that are good for you how you can tell if you are public or not. I believe this is just in the settings app, if I remember. Um, let me just take a peek. I believe it's just in the settings. Um, yes. Yeah, settings and under privacy. So settings, privacy, and you can check that way. Yay. All right, Ray, did I miss anything else in the in the chat? I'm trying to see if I miss any other questions. Awesome. Yes. I love re getting out of the message me to order. Yes. I hate I hate those posts. <laughs> I hate those posts. What would you say in regards to, because I see that a lot, you know, I have a lot of consultants in my, my feed and I see that like message me to order or they just post a stock image and nothing else or a stock image and say putting in an order tonight. Like, how would you change that? Can you give them some wording ideas or some kind of. Yeah, that is a good one because uh, I agree. Uh, that is something that you see a whole lot. And I will tell you this, that nine times out of 10, sadly enough, um, you know, people may try and uh, throw us in with other direct sales companies and what other people do in, in, in our type of a direct sales business, right? We know that we're different. We know that we hold ourselves to a higher standard, but they've probably more than likely have probably not had the greatest experience. So I will tell you right now, if you're using the, you know, or, you know, message me for more details, while we know that sometimes we have to do that for compliancy, 
At the same time, I guarantee you the first thing that comes into their head is, oh, well, if I get into that conversation, I'm going to end up hosting a party and probably having to do this and do that and do whatever else. They probably already have a whole story in their mind. So unless they are really wanting to order from you, that's when they're going to message you. But here's the thing. If you're being consistent and you're showing up and you're sharing, right, people will not jump into your messages necessarily to order. They're either going to look in your bio or if you're on Facebook, right, maybe you've connected your, if you've got a business page or if you have a VIP page, right, connecting that into your personal Facebook is going to help you to direct them. They're going to find you, okay? And so to kind of get out of that wording, a lot of times I will use the, the terms like comment below if if you can relate, right? Or um, I, I'm loving this warmer this month. Who else loves the color pink? So instead of, hey, message me about this warmer, again, hopefully if they love the color pink, they're going to write whatever it is, right? And maybe it's something like, oh my gosh, I just redid my daughter's bedroom and it's all pink. Now, what am I thinking? Oh my gosh, here's my opportunity. I'm going to send them a message and I'm going to say, oh my gosh, Ree, your daughter's room, you just redid it. <gasps> you know what? We have the cutest iridescent warmer that came out, came out this month. I've got to send you this picture. Look at this warmer. Now, that is going to get you a sale faster than message me for info. Just trust me. They've probably already been down the road of the message me for info. <laughs> so if you're able to connect with them better, that's probably going to work better for you. I love that, Jackie. Can you, you, you mentioned a little seed of something that we kind of overlook sometimes in social media. Can you say how important their profile information is? Yes, ma'am. I think that um, it it can sometimes be like that hidden thing that you, you really didn't think about. Because on Instagram specifically, they do allow you in your bio to have one hyperlink. So you can have your chance to have one link in there. And so this is what I usually will tell my people who are just getting started or um, not yet having a whole lot of things set up in their business, right? Because we're all learning at different levels. We're all getting there. We're learning one thing at a time. And so the first thing that I always tell everybody is to use that link as a perfect opportunity to put in your website, right? So at least make sure that your Sensi website is there. Now, as you maybe start to get more into social media, maybe you find things like there's a really great free um, website or well, it's an app. It's called Milkshake, just like you would think, M-I-L-K-S-H-A-K-E. It brings all the boys to the yard. Well, it brings the customers to the yard because what it is, is it's a completely free app. There's not even a paid version to get to. So it's completely free, but it's kind of like Linktree where you can go in there, you can customize it. You can put a little blurb telling your story, why you love Sensi, why you do what you do. Um, what you love about it. You can also share images in there. You can put links to your Facebook VIP group. You can put one over here to your Pinterest, all kinds of things. It really was a really great thing um, that I, I loved, loved, loved. Now I've kind of grown in my business. And so I actually use JotForm and I created a JotForm app. And that's what I have in my bio. But everything is pretty similar to like that Linktree thing. The whole point is to be able to have a link there. And another way to do this without even knowing any of the other apps as a little nugget is to go to your own PWS. And if you go there and you scroll all the way down to the contact me button on your on your workstation or not on your workstation, sorry, on your website, your PWS, scroll down. So you see contact me. So pretend like you're a customer and click the button. It pulls up a contact page and it gives a space for their name, their phone number, their address. Um, what are you interested in? Hosting a party, buying products, blah, blah, blah. When your customers fill that out, it automatically will send you an email and it'll say that it's coming from, I think, Sensi Info or Sensi something. Um, but it comes from Sensi and it'll say like contact request. 
somebody has filled out that form. So if you really want to get connections, you can utilize that link in your bio. So go to your PWS, scroll down to that contact me, copy that link and put that in your Instagram bio. That will give you a great, what we like to call maybe like a lead generator, right? That's going to bring people to you. Someone has taken the time to fill that out. They're coming to you. You didn't have to go knock on their door. So that's a really great way to do that without even doing all the apps and all the fancy stuff. Um, I would say between Milkshake and Linktree, um, Milkshake, because it's completely free and you can customize it to brand colors, to your picture, to your puppies, whatever you, you know, whatever is you. And, and I loved it. Like I said, I, I used it until I created my little job form thing, but yeah, that's what I use. And yeah, another great thing too, to lead them if you wanted to as well, even if you're looking for that, you know, um, comment me or comment or sorry, message me for more details is, you know, find my link in my bio. That's always something good too. And again, it's something that is less scary to most people when they say link in bio. Plus, hopefully it's getting them to, if they don't already follow you, maybe they found you because you used a great hashtag, right? And you just happen to show up in their feed and then they go and they click on your bio and hopefully they're gonna click that follow button, right? Or maybe they do have a question. And then really utilizing that space as, I wouldn't necessarily say use it as a billboard, but almost as a like a calling card of what you're about. So um, I like to say in mine, I think um, I think one of mine is uh, I put the rock quote up there, never be the smartest person in the room. I love that quote. Uh, it's like I have that quote on there. Um, I think in my bio, it also says um, helping people or I build leaders and help people build businesses or something like that, right? So it's coming up and letting people know that that's what I'm here for. I'm here for business, I'm here to inspire, I'm here to share. And so whatever it is that is you, right? So look back at your branding. If you're having trouble with branding, reach out to your friends, your closest friends, reach out to your family, reach out to your sponsor even, right? Or your upline, you got a really great upline up here, right? She will definitely let you know, right? And and say, you know, what is it when you think of me, what stands out, right? And maybe you can't, you're looking for that branding. Ask your friends, ask your, your partner, ask your daughters, your, your sons, right? Ask people, what do you think of when you think of me? If you're really trying to sink into where your brand is and make that part of your, your uh, bio in your Instagram, because again, it's gonna bring more people to you rather than buy Scentsy, click here. Please don't do that. Please don't. Do that. That's like the post and pray. Please don't do that. <laughs> um, Jackie, <clears throat> how about your highlights? I know I notice a lot of people don't utilize their highlights. Yes, I love highlights. Might I just say? Um, oh, and I've got another nugget for you guys too. Okay, you guys are getting all the nuggets tonight. I feel like I haven't shared these lately. Okay, so um, branding is tough. That's okay. Um, reach out ask those close people ask those close people right get get some feedback you'll find it. it it may take time it's okay you just be you in the meantime you aren't going anywhere um so highlight it's when you are creating stories whatever you're adding to your stories i like to at least throw in some part of my day some days it's you know i, I was so busy or i was running around and i had stuff to do it might even just be me of you know uh, taking a picture of my dinner that I put in the stories, right? Like at the end of the day, I'm a mom. I cook every night. These people like to eat. But when you're having those stories and maybe you've done a story where either you've shared um, something really neat, maybe you've uh, set your warmers up and you're you're doing a really you know great video or um, you've taken a great picture and you've added it to your stories, what have you. You want to remember SFR because hopefully all of you guys are registered for SFR or at least for virtual and you'll be posting for that. Okay. So when you're doing that and sharing all of that excitement in your stories, you have the option. Now it actually shows highlight 
um, on Instagram. So go back and click on your own story like you're watching it yourself. If you've never watched your own stories, you just go up to the top of the screen, click your little bubble there where your face is. And if you have any stories for the day, it will start to show you all the stories. Um, if you want to create a highlight, then you just click, I think it's like a little star at the bottom of the screen, click that little star and it'll say, create a highlight. Now, I personally, I like to, I, I probably like to too much organize all of my highlights into different things because I'm a dog mom. Yes, Ree's got it right there. Perfect. Um, and that's what you're going to push. And then you're going to get to share it or save it. Those highlights, yep, that's where she's showing where you can go through and choose the highlights you've already created. You can always create a new one. It's that very first button there. Just hit create new and name it SFR 2022, right? Whatever it is. And make that highlight. You can add those stories to it. What happens is, is those stories then as they become a highlight, that's you kind of putting them on the wall, let's say, okay? You've pulled, you've printed it out of the printer. Now you're going to put it on the wall and you're going to remember that as a memory. Or you really thought that that was it, that those are great pictures I took of that whole summer collection that came out. I cannot wait to get mine. Um, you know, taking great pictures. So you want to be able to show your customers later on, right? All you have to do is create that highlight. It goes in there and it will it will save there because stories are only good for 24 hours and they disappear. Okay, same thing on Facebook. Um, but saving them as a highlight is fun and it's great and it's a really great way because when people are going to your bio and checking you out nine times out of ten they're going to be a little bit soccerish, right and they're probably going to watch some of your highlights so that's good too so i always like to throw in different things that i like to do i like to cook so there's one on there about cooking friends um boot camp when i went to director boot camp all those fun things right they can see all of those things there's also an opportunity now that Instagram came out with, and I've only done it a couple of times. I need to do it more. Um, but you can go in there and you can actually, let's see if I, if I remember how to do this. Oh, now that I'm putting myself on the spot. Nope. Uh, yes. Okay. So this is so hard to show. I'm so sorry. I hate doing it backwards. This is um, a highlight from one of my highlights. So re showed hers, same thing, right? They're just the little bubbles there. When you click on that, there's a little three dots in the bottom corner and it says more. I know it's hard to read, I'm so sorry. It just says more, but when you click on those three dots, it gives you the option where you can, this is where you can edit the highlight, you can remove it, you could boost it, you could do whatever you want, you know, all kinds of things. Share it to Pinterest from here, that will also regenerate people. I love doing that to get engagement, right? Um, but it says convert to real. And when you click convert to real, it will take that entire highlight and make a reel for you that you can then post. So as we go into SFR 2022, I would suggest taking pictures, even if you're doing it virtual, right? Still show what you're doing, right? Remember, there's, there's no judgment here and you're sharing how you're experiencing SFR in whatever way that is. So create a highlight for SFR 2022, share those things. And then afterwards, you can go in and it will generate this whole reel for you. You can add music to it. You can put it back into your feed. And that's another thing too, because I do have some on there that are like, you know, LTOs where it just shows LTOs that we've had from the past. And maybe I just want to do a little reminiscing or um, a little while ago, I replayed and made it into a reel when I went to boot camp. So I, I converted that to a reel so I could share that experience again. Because again, it's all about sharing experiences. But you can make a reel directly from those highlights without doing anything except clicking and picking out some music. So that was my uh, little golden nugget that I had for you guys. <laughs> I love that, Jackie. I know it's like people's minds are being blown tonight and I love it. It's just like a refresher. Some are like tightening up. Some are like, oh, the 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 bio, the real, the I'm I'm just so blessed that you are able to be here tonight. 
and we're about to hit an hour. So I don't want to, to keep you any longer, but um, I did put their, um, your Instagram in the chat so they can follow you. And, um, and Jackie is very responsive. If you ever have any questions, I'm sure she's happy to help. Um, but thank you, Jackie, so much. I'm just so grateful. I, I mean, it was quality. I'm gonna be saving this uh, recording. I'll upload it on my YouTube as well as I'll send it to yours, Jackie, in case you wanna throw it on your YouTube Aww. page. And then um, I will also add it to the Let's Frequent Post group so that they can rewatch it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here. I, I appreciate you and I know everybody else did as well, so. Well, thank you. I appreciate you and I adore you. Thank you so much for pouring into everybody like you always do. Oh, all right, love you guys. Have a good night. <laughs>